Hey guys, welcome back to our channel, Plots with a Twist, where we discuss books amongst other things. And Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Merry Christmas! <laughs> happy Hanukkah! Happy Kwanzaa! I know we missed all the holidays, but we're here. Yes, it's our first video of 2024. Can you believe it? Yes, yes. So, took a little breather for the holiday season as well as had some travel in there. So, but we're back to catch up on the video. So, we are doing our wrap up for December. Yes and talking about what we're reading for January. So let's go ahead and get into it. Okay. How many books you read for December? Girl, three. Three, that's good. I read two, so. Okay. So, um, boom. Uh, so first, I guess, I'll go into The Drowning Woman by Robin Harding. You seen that? I've seen it going around, but. Mm -hmm. I finally read it. So I put that on hold like a few months ago mm -hmm. and I finally got it in December. So um, that is about, at first it was giving me night crawling vibes, but mm. it's not that. It's not okay. that at all. I don't know if it was the narrator or just the content, mm -hmm. but it's about this woman. What's her name? Lee. It was <laughs> an easy name. That's what I'm like. Lee, she was um, a homeless woman, mm -hmm. um, down on her luck. She right. had a thriving business, had a restaurant, but uh, mm -hmm. I need to read that. Mm -hmm. It closed during COVID or after COVID, and um, because she couldn't keep up with her business. But pretty much, she had a uh, some shady dealings with a uh, like a loan shark, I guess. Mm -hmm. So he was after her. So she went on a run and ended up in across the country in Seattle. I want to say it was Seattle. But pretty much, she um, sleeps in her car and really doesn't want to accept the life of home homelessness. So just trying not to hit rock bottom. But pretty much has hit her rock bottom and taking odd jobs here and there so she can get back on her feet. Um, so one day she uh, decides to park in a neighborhood that was a little bit more safe and secluded. And one morning she awakens to a woman crying by the beach. And so she goes out and kind of um, investigates. And then the woman just all of a sudden goes into the water. And um, yeah, she goes in to save the water, save the water. She goes in to save the woman um, from nearly drowning. And there ensues this friendship this odd friendship between the two this odd connection so the woman i can't remember her name because her name wasn't as easy was it i can't remember but anywho she comes and starts checking in on lee and they start to build a bond lee starts to work at this uh bar and gets uh start gets a connection with this guy the woman lee be friends is kind of in a situation where she was trying to go into the water to you know kind of uh commit hazel hazel that's it she goes into the she's uh going into the water to end her life because she's uh kind of depressed because she's in a situation where she is in a marriage where her husband it's just an abusive situation mm -hmm. so she pretty much was trying to escape that so lee tries to help her um but finds quickly finds out that there's more to the woman's situation then I guess that's a way to say it. There's more to the woman's situation than Lee anticipated. Um, and Lee finds herself in the middle of just this odd situation mm -hmm. with this woman that she befriended after saving her from drowning. Mm. So yeah, that is it. So like I said, initially it was giving me Nightcrawler vibe because it was going into the homelessness. Not that she wasn't homeless, but she was like neglected, right? Mm -hmm. Um and so it was going into like that type of, I thought that was, it was going to be that type of story where it was talking about that. But then I was like, no, I thought this was a suspense type book. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, it was. <laughs> so <laughs> once it shifted gears, I was like, okay. But um, I found the book very enjoyable. I just thought um, the way things progressed, I, I did kind of think um, at moments like, so pretty much Lee ends up in a situation where, you know, her naivete or just her desire to be connected to people causes her to be in a situation she shouldn't be in. And I just found it like very interesting because it wasn't like she was dumb or like it, it wasn't one of those stories where you pity the main character. I like that, that they end up in a situation, but it's not, 
you don't pity them like, oh my God, girl. Like, mm -hmm. um, so I thought she still, the author did a great job of still making them dynamic, strong characters while still putting them in a messed up situation. Um, I really enjoyed just how the plot uh, twisted and really I enjoyed the ending and how things kind of wrapped up. Um, I don't know. I, I, don't, I can't remember what detail or is in the... Um, synopsis so it's probably more i could say about the plot but overall i just think it was a good kind of i don't want to say fast paced but it was a nicely paced story that you could really enjoy and get lost in and, and yeah it had a great ending i enjoyed it okay i'll put that on my list it was good okay so the book that i read for last month was pineapple street by jenny jackson it was a book um it really wasn't on my radar but it was on new york times like one of the best books of I guess 20 or like, I don't know. It was on a, a bestsellers list or a best something list. It was on my radar. And um, my friend at work, she gave it to me to read because she enjoyed it. So this book follows a family, the Stockton family. Um, it follows Sasha, who is married into the family. She married the um, eldest brother of the family. It follows <laughs> Georgiana and Darley are the sisters in the Stockton family. And Sasha has married into the family. And the book goes um, between those three POVs. Um, so Sasha basically has married into this family where her husband is very close with his family and they are a wealthy family. They are like wealthy, like, they, I think his family is like in real estate. And so they make good money. They all went to good schools and are, you know, doing trust fund babies, all that type of stuff. The sisters are... Um, Darlie, the older sister, has her own family um, with two kids. And then Georgiana is the youngest who she's trying to find her way in life. She works for a nonprofit. And um, they're just very close with their brother. And so this kind of puts a strain on um, their relationship with Sasha because they don't, they're not really accepting of her. She's kind of just like a regular middle class girl who's married into this rich family and is still kind of learning the ways of like how they do things and just not feeling fully accepted by the family. Mm -hmm. um, so it kind of just goes into how they view her um, based on what their brother has told them and then a little bit into her relationship, uh, her actual relationship with her husband. Um, and how she kind of like wants that reassurance from him and he doesn't really see, you know, how his sisters are like treating, um, Sasha. And so the book kind of just goes into the, Georgiana has, is having trouble at work. She's never really been in love and she meets a guy at work, um, that she falls in love with. Um, but he has more going on that leads to I, and then Darlie, she is, she's like i said she's married she has her own family um and they come uh, up on some trouble that she kind of is like keeping to herself and not sharing with her family so um all those three things and how the the women i guess in the family um kind of relate to each other is what the book is about um if that makes sense and so it um to me it was a good book i enjoyed the writing but um I don't think that it's some. if I just read the synopsis so I saw it maybe based on the cover because the cover is kind of cute but it's not something I think that I would normally pick up just because um what it talks about and the characters um just like the rich wealthy New York socialites and um their troubles it's just not that interesting to me mm. um or the book didn't make it that interesting now the relationships with the sister and um the sister's and um their sister-in-law was you know it had some what, what you call it com conflict that you kind of want to see get resolved or see if it's going to get resolved so that's what kept me interested but outside of that i really didn't i don't know i just i was waiting for the book to end <laughs> so Ooh. yeah and it wasn't it wasn't a bad book it's just like i don't know i, I think the subject matter in general was boring um but that's just me so i think it would probably make a good movie a good show or something but um just reading it and like seeing their like trials and tribulations it's kind of like who cares but <laughs> it's giving, um that sounds like a little bit like the nest it's kind of like the nest oh, but okay. without the like skin there's no yeah. like scandal there's yeah. no salaciousness it's just like you know like a, a normal family per se um and you know just their their world um and then sasha the sister-in-law coming into their world you kind of kind of see like from an outsider's perspective um 
yeah like how she views everything and then like how they view her so that was interesting um but other than that i really didn't you know I, i'm not gonna say i didn't enjoy it it wasn't like a bad book but it wasn't the the best i yeah it was just okay <laughs> the right home about yeah that's how i felt about it all right so for me i finally finished the housemate secret by frida mcfadden you love her well, first of all, I couldn't even remember the name of the second book for the mm -hmm. last two months. But yeah, I mean, let's talk about it. <laughs> so, um, I read The Housemaid earlier in the year, um, last year. And so, yeah, I, bought, I had bought them both on Kindle. So, I was like, yeah, let's go ahead. Um, and I read it with my eyes. Mm -hmm. So, I feel accomplished. But it took me longer to read this because I started it like October. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But um, pretty much it, it, you know, we rejoin our main character. Can't remember her name at this point <laughs> right now. What's her name? I can't remember. Mm -hmm. uh, hold on, 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 Willie, Millie, Millie, mm -hmm. Wilhelmina, Wilhelmina Calloway. I remember it. Um, so she, it, this is a few, it, this takes place, the book takes place a couple of years a few years after the events in the first book. So Wilhelmina is now trying to still work as a housemaid and um, in school and really trying to get her life together. Um, you know, after just, again, the first one, you know, she was in prison, this, that, and the third. And so she's trying to get her life together, trying to kind of wash her hands of the, her reputation um and just really live the straight and narrow path and become a social worker to help women you know the legitimate way and um in that she does end up getting this job as a housemaid um and it pays really well and there's just something off about the couple so you find that you know it's kind of similar vibes to the first one where you know something's off about that particular cu couple where the the wife was you know kind of just being really mean to her in this one um, you barely saw the wife and then the husband just seemed kind of off and odd and she didn't think too much of it. But of course it's, it's within her nature to poke and pry and, and really just discovers that the wife might be in a situation that she could potentially help with. And she's helped in the years between the books, she's helped women with, you know, their abusive situations. And so, um, yeah, she, she ventures out to help her, but finds herself um, in a center of an investigation um, when things happen at the home. And it does a similar thing as the first one where things aren't as they seem. Um, and you find out a lot about what has happened in this between this couple and what role will Lamina or millie plays within you know their employ so um i would say um it wasn't a copy and paste of the first one in in, in that in the what happens but it was kind of similar vibes in that millie was just very naive and worked for this couple and mm -hmm. dating this guy and it's just i i, I wanted her to get past that and really kind of grow because that was one of the things that kind of annoyed me a little bit about the first one but um it wasn't off-putting where i couldn't like get into her as a character it's just like girl come on um <laughs> and then just how the the story flips and this this big reveal comes again that's kind of that's also similar but the actual plot was still very interesting you still wanted to know what was going on and it was different enough where you're like okay it's not a, 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 an exact replica of the first book i'd be interested to see how the third one is because i think a third one comes out either this month or maybe in a couple of months um so I'm the characters are all different in the books the main character isn't. Oh, okay, okay. I was going to say, what makes it the series? Yeah, so she is following her. But okay. yeah, I I would be interested as to where the story could go from here. But mm -hmm. I would say overall, it's it's got like the entertainment factor. It's got like the things you liked and enjoy. Not if, Even if you haven't read the first one, it just has those things that you enjoy about suspense and, and thrillers and whatnot and, and seem, seeming like, oh, nothing's about to happen. And then boom, this big thing happens and you're like, oh my God. Mm -hmm. So it has that little, that shock and awe in there. But other than that, um, 
Yeah, it was okay. I, I, I mean, I would read the third one. I just, I just don't know what, what, what other story you're gonna tell, especially mm -hmm. if you do the same thing, like yeah. where oh she's just working and going about her day, and then boom, yeah, and it's like, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Okay, so the last book that we can talk about, we can talk about together. Yes, it together, and that's because that's your only other book, right? Yeah. Oh, look at you. So yeah, Iron Flame took up most of my December. So <laughs> it took up a lot of mine, honestly, too. Yeah, it was a long. Book. You know what? It wasn't that it took up a lot of time. It was that it was kind of like, oh, what do I read? I mm -hmm. didn't have a December. I didn't have a TBR. Yeah, specifically, so it was hard to like come up out of that and yeah. then pick up pick something. Okay, so I didn't really take my notes on it, but Iron Flame Can by Rebecca Jones. Yo, book. And y'all know Iron Flame fo follows the, what's the, what are they called? Dragonflyers. Uh huh. Um, Dragon Riders. Dragon Riders. Violet, Zayden, and their crew. Um, in the second <laughs> installment, <laughs> they are. We were left with a cliffhanger from the last book. I don't think we're gonna put any spoilers, but the cliffhanger from the last book is kind of like a big yeah. deal. So, um, it catches back up from where the book left off, and... I think you can still talk about the book without talking about it. the cliffhanger. Well, yeah, with her... Oh, I was just literally about to say what the cliffhanger... But yeah, it picks up where the book left off, and you go into the adventures of Violet, you know, facing her second year at Dragon Riding School, what that process looks like, you know, her coming on the other side of all the danger she was in but still being very much in danger and um there being other imminent threats that she's being made aware of that she was not aware of before in the previous book and that kind of came to a light towards the end of the book and just her having all this knowledge but not being able to share it because it it will be technically one not believed and probably considered like treason treason mm -hmm. so and then in this book she has she's facing even more enemies mm -hmm. um within the school and outside so it's just a lot for violet she going through it she is so what are your thoughts <laughs> So the positive, or right, we can do a full book review if you all want. Maybe we can do a book review and include both books and talk mm -hmm. about it and talk Some about, comparisons. yeah, some things. But I say overall, I enjoyed the book. Mm -hmm. um, I was right in the thick of it with everything. Just really, um, it had that same excitement, built up the same kind of climactic energy and, and ready for everything to kind of, you was ready for everything to kind of, uh, boil up and bubble over and once it got to that point it was like oh ah, oh okay oh mm -hmm. so it had all those elements as well um so yeah I think overall I enjoyed it I did see a lot of criticism on this particular book and I'm not disagreeing with the criticism mm -hmm. but I'll let you say what you like what you were um yeah I enjoyed the same, more of the same um I think that it did a good job picking up uh, where it left off and keeping that same, like, just anticipation um, that it kept up. Yeah, the momentum that it kept in the, um, that it had in the first book, it kept it in the second book. Um, there were a lot more, maybe not more, but there were some, um, like, fight scenes in this book that kind of, especially when you're listening to it, it's kind of like, oh my God, like, what's going to happen? And it was really exciting. So, I enjoyed it. Overall, I did enjoy the book. Yeah, I mean, there it came with its problems. Mm -hmm. um, definitely some continuity issues um, a little <laughs> bit. Mm -hmm. And then um, you had some some of the same dialogue over and over again. And, and, you know, when you think a character is progressing, they're not. Mm -hmm. They come back to the same point. So some of those things kind of hindered the story from progressing in a way that it could have. And there's some speculation as to why that is. Mm -hmm. I would say do some research on that because I don't, I've only seen one theory, but I've seen, you know, people talk about like why, you know, this one may not have been as su successful in its, not in its like hype and people reading it, but in its storytelling. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, I, I and like I said, I can't disagree. I don't disagree with any other criticism. It's just, I still enjoyed it. So I'm not like, oh, it's it's kind of like, oh, yeah, that's true. But it was still yeah. a fun ride. 
Um, so yeah, I say overall, it was it was still an enjoyable book. I look forward to the next one. Um, where they are right now. That ending, I would say the ending it was a little predictable. Mm -hmm. You think so? Yeah, and it's kind of just like it didn't have as much shock as the first yeah, one. Yeah, the first one. I feel but like it, it was trying to have it, the same. It had thing. a shock, but I would be interested to see where they go where with they go the next here. one. Yeah. yeah. And okay. then I think the next one doesn't need to be as long. I feel like the first one, like, yes, you're building up the characters and like building up the story. But this one, I feel like, I feel like this one needed to be long. this long. Yeah. Yeah, this one wasn't unnecessarily long. Like, there was a lot of stuff in there that I felt like could have been like left out. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's just personal opinion. All right, but that's it. Let's get into what we're reading for the month of Ooh, January. I'm reading all the books in January. Ooh. So January, I've already had a good start. You know, we are a little bit uh, approaching or about halfway into the month. Mm -hmm. So uh, your girls are reading. Um, so I will start. I'm going to read Reminders of You by Colleen Hoover. It was on my Kindle. Mm -hmm. I had the time I Colleen Hoover in and I looked and I said, oh, let me go oh, ahead man. and read that one. And I, with my eyes, with my eyes. <laughs> All right, what, what you got? I'm going to read Heaven. Look, look at me through the books. Heaven by Mieko Kawakami. Um, my nephew, hey Jaden, if you're watching this, he's not, but um, <laughs> my nephew suggested this book to me. And then when I got it at the bookstore, we were at a bookstore and they had it. So I was like, I'm just get it. And the late day, everybody's like raving over it. So, um, I started it already. It's giving sad vibes, but I'm going to finish it. Um, yeah, I never heard of this author, but apparently she has a bunch of books that are really good. And I think all her books are in Japanese and I feel translated. Like I've seen some of her books and I've seen that one. Mm -hmm. Okay. I will be reading from Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. So that was one um, Asia sent to me. Mm -hmm. I'm and gonna I, read that too. That's <laughs> my idea. And I think maybe this is the year of dark romance. I don't know, but I'm I'm assuming that's what Asia is starting to get into dark romances. That's what's on my TikTok <laughs> because you get into them, so yeah. your algorithm is like, here you yeah. go. So and everybody I, said that one was like a good one. So, but I will say, it, it, uh, some of these dark uh, fantasy romances have been popping up on my uh, stuff as well, and so I've seen it too. But um, yeah. And I feel like they're easy reads. Like, you're in a reading slump and you just want to read something real. Like, just whatever. Um, okay, so yeah, that's on my list. And then I'm also going to read House of Bane and Blood. Another kind of dark romance um, that popped up for me. But it caught my eye because the girl that was talking about it, she was like, if you like um, Peaky Blinders and you like like dark romance, you need to read. I was like, ooh, yeah, I know Peaky Blinders is my show. So, mm -hmm. um, it kind of gives that vibe. But I don't like, only because like, the main guy has like brothers and stuff so i feel like that's the only and it's like a family but yeah this is on my um list it's like a it's fantasy and dark romance and all that so physical books y'all okay <laughs> i'll that be family. reading the book of the year i saw that on some list the book of 2023 um mm -hmm. i saw it on list some list it was like the most popular most something the the heaven and earth grocery store by james mcbride I never heard of that. If oh, I'm reading an adult again. book. Yes, type it in. You see I know who James McBride is. Well, I don't <laughs> know what list I was looking at, but whatever list I was looking at, they was like, that's the, that was the book stuff. of 2023. I might have made that up, though. No, I, 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 I legit reading. saw it. it I legit reading. saw it, but it was on a Goodreads. I, it was definitely on a Goodreads list of Goodreads Choice Awards. I can't remember if it won or not mm -hmm. in its category, but for sure. Actually, it didn't win in its category. Mm -hmm. I think, um, I can't remember what category it was in, but it's considered historical fiction. So, oh, look at me. You don't even like that. I know, but I said, <laughs> let me get an adult, adult grown-up book in here. And I, did, I picked that one. Okay. That's it? That's all you got? Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, I got one more. Okay. I'll probably do two more, but right now, no. Uh, this is the only one I, I plan. Mm -hmm. And that is The Guest House by Nita Prost. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know that The author. Guest House. The Mystery Guest. Nita Prost did The Maid. Oh, okay, yeah. So this is the second installment. Mm -hmm. So it's a series? I guess so. Yeah. I didn't know it was going to be a series. So once I saw that, I was like, hmm, I have an Audible credit. Let's go ahead and get it. So. You know, I, I like zoologies. Give me two books. I like two books. Like, that's the perfect amount. Sits across. 
Uh, I know I still have that book but this is the year of me reading books that I own so yeah that's why I popped open the Kindle book so mm -hmm. that's why I read that because I bought that months ago mm, look at us but yeah look at us who are we all right let us know if you have any thoughts on any other books we missed here today let us know what you're reading let us know what you've done in the new year let us know all the things like this video subscribe ring the bell and we'll be back next time bye, bye.